What's up everybody, my name is Alfie Marsh and in this video I'm going to give you a full tutorial of Perplexity AI. So what is Perplexity AI? Well, it's an AI powered search engine and research platform that gives you accurate answers to comprehensive and pretty complex questions. Um, it was founded in August 2022 by the CEO Aravan Srinivas, who was previously at OpenAI and DeepMind. Perplexity has quickly gained traction. They raised $100 million last year, uh, and their Series B, they got, I think it was a $520 million valuation. They got notable investors like Jeff Bezos, uh, Bessemer Ventures, Nvidia, and Databricks. And as of January 2024, they had 10 million monthly active users. If you actually go fast forward to today, which is April, uh, they have 60 million, I believe, monthly visitors on their website if you check using similar web. So it's crazy traction within a very short period of time. So what is the actual product? For this, let's actually jump in uh, and, and have a look at, at the product itself. Um, so this is perplexity. Um, in a nutshell, it combines an AI chatbot the capabilities of an AI chatbot with web search so that you can get ready-made answers uh, and get your questions. Although a lot of people talk about it as an AI powered search engine, their CEO often refers to perplexity as an answer engine. Um, so it's pretty different in the way that it works. So let, let's give an example. Um, for example, let's say um, how many jobs will be displaced by AI? This is one question. Uh, and if I go and answer the same question to Google, how many jobs will be displaced by AI? We just kind of get some links, basically. It does a pretty decent job of summarizing some information within a particular post. It also gives you that the questions people asked, but it just gives you basically 10 blue links. Um, if you come back into perplexity, however, um, it's gonna give me a slight different answer. So firstly, it asked me for a question. So which industries are you interested in? Um, I'm not necessarily interested in any particular one, so I'm just gonna skip and see what it has. So as you can see, it first tries to understand the question. And then once it understands the question, it's going to look for sources. So if I go back into these three steps, it's going to search the web. And so you can see it's actually searched it for different keywords. Jobs displaced by AI, AI impact on job loss, AI job displacement by industry, et cetera, et cetera, which is really interesting. So it's kind of optimizing the search itself to answer your question. Uh, and it found 20 sources. So it's got some of these sources cited right at the top so you can click in directly so if I click on this one here it's going to take me to LinkedIn uh, great and so I can see the content there but what's more interesting is it gives you the answer so what it does is it takes these sources and then it aims to answer your question by using the content that's within those sources you now going back over to Google it's not trying to summarize across multiple sources. In this summary here, which is somewhat new-ish for Google, um, this is just giving you like the exact answer to your question, which is hidden within one particular article. Now imagine that your question was kind of complex and no one article mentioned it, and the answer was discovered across multiple sources. Google's not gonna be able to do that, but perplexity is. It's gonna take kind of like the aggregate information and provide you with a very well-rounded answer. And so here it's taken all these different statistics. Goldman Sachs says 300 million people or full-time jobs worldwide could be impacted. Uh, we've got McKinsey reports, and all of these, again, they're cited and I can access directly the uh, original source information. So this is really powerful for answering questions, not searching the internet, but answering questions. Now, there's a few other features that we can look at, um, and particularly like how is this different from maybe ChatGPT? So if we go over to ChatGPT, let's give a different uh, question. So we're on ChatGPT 3.5, which you have access to for free. Um, so let's ask the question, um, who won in the Max Holloway versus Justin, and I'm going to spell this wrong, Gaethje fight. So 
for any UFC fans out there, this last weekend at UFC 300, uh, Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje fought, uh, and spoiler alert, Max Holloway won. Um, and as you can see, ChatGPT says, as of my last update in January 2022, Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje haven't fought. So the problem with these language models like ChatGPT is they are trained on a static kind of data set. Like once they've been trained, that model is going to predict the answer to your question based on what it has already learned in the past. So if you ask for a kind of factual question that it hasn't got that answer to, it's not going to be able to give you the answer or it might just hallucinate and make something up. So this training was cut off in January 2022. It is now April 2024 and the Max Holloway fight and Justin Gaethje fight hasn't yet happened yet in the training data. So they can't access this information. If I was to go over to, uh, let's say, Google and say, who won the Max Holloway versus Justin and there's the correct spelling fight. It's going to, it will kind of answer my question because I can now see the fight. It was one here. Um, it puts this widget in, but it does actually just give me all the links, which then have the answer. It doesn't directly answer my question. It is a search engine to help me find the links to websites, which answer my question. Whereas if I go to perplexity AI again, and let's just do a new one. Um, who won in the Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje fight? It's going to pull the sources. So again, like YouTube, Reddit, so on and so forth. We've already got the images on the right. Based on the provided search results, Max Holloway defeated Justin Gaethje at UFC 300 to win the BMF title, which is true. And it's giving me the actual sources. So it's taking that and then answering my question. So it behaves very differently. Now, what's interesting, ChatGPT, on the other hand, if you go to ChatGPT 4, uh, which is on the pro version, I believe now, um, previously, they wouldn't be able to answer this question. They would have to go and search the internet as well. But they are starting to provide these answers. So who won the Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje fight? GPT-4 is actually... Uh, Go and search in the internet. So it clearly tells me at UFC 300, um, Max Holloway won the fight with a knockout victory. Uh, what round, let's see, what round did he win? I want to see if it's just not hallucinating. Okay, that's completely false. Um, he won in the fifth round. Um, <clears throat> what was the judges <laughs> what what were the judges scorecards so this is come like the first part was right um he did win the fight and he did win the bmf title at usc 300 the thing is the latest model i don't think was trained up until this weekend um so if that's the case then they must be going and searching the internet but as I start asking follow-up questions, like which round did he win? So for context, he won in the fifth round. In the last two seconds of the round, he knocked him out. Um, and he says, by knockout in the first round against Justin Gaethje, the judges didn't score the fight. The knockout occurred before the round concluded, so there was no scorecards. Okay, so this is just factually incorrect. Now, if I come here, does it tell me anything else? Does it tell me what round? We've just one second remaining. Okay, so let's say, what round did Max Holloway win in? Let's send that. So with just one second remaining in the fifth round and final round of their fight. So this is accurate. And then again, it gives me the answers. Um, so it's just much better at pulling real-time information from the internet. So that's one benefit. But it's also going to just help me do research without uh, believing in uh, hallucinations. Because what ChatGPT and other models like Claude um, and Gemini, what they're all going to do is they have a model which has been trained and is going to give you an answer which may not be factually correct because it's just 
predicting what it should say, they are kind of detached from reality. They're detached from the real world. But what we're seeing with perplexity is they've got these language models and they're actually powered by the very same language models. If I go in and rewrite this, you can see I can actually change uh, the models that are used from GPT-4 to Claude and so on. So they're using the same models behind, but there's one step uh, that's happening in between, which is they're going to search for the articles. They're then going to read and understand them and then aggregate that to give you an answer. Uh, and ChatGPT is starting to do this sort of stuff with search with Bing um, and go in their power uh, their partnership with Microsoft and using the Bing search to go and pull, you know, information from the internet is starting to happen, but it's it's pretty basic uh, and it's not going to give you this like aggregated answer. So that's kind of a little bit of an overview as to how the main chat works. So let's jump into some of the other features that you can use. Um, so firstly, we can start this one from uh, scratch. Let's go back to home. So we have the focus mode here. And we also have attach. So <clears throat> um, the focus mode is going to allow me to specify which types of sources I want to focus on. So for example, I could just focus on Reddit. And if I wanted to answer, ask the question, what are the top tools for marketers? Uh, let's say top AI tools for marketers in 2024. Let's hit enter. So again, it's going to first understand the question, then it's going to search the web, and then it's going to pull my results. So in this case, it's only doing one top AI tools for marketers 2024. It found eight sources. Again, all of these sources are now Reddit. So if I click on this, you're going to see all of the different Reddit threads. And then it's going to summarize them. Okay, content platforms, Jasper, etc., etc. predictive analytic tools, virtual assistant. Okay, so it's more giving me like types of tools and some actual ones, Surf AI. So this gives me like a good kind of like overview. And then I can continue asking our questions. So if you want to narrow down for like particular sources, that's a great, uh, a great way to do so. Now, what else can we do? Um, if we go back to home again, we can also attach a PDF. So very similar to uh, ChatGPT, same thing with Claude, we can update a PDF file and then ask it questions. So this is great for like research papers if you want to go very specific and summarize information. I think this feature is okay. Um, it's kind of become table stakes. A lot of the other chat chats that are going on top of base models like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, they can do this. Um, but it is good for pulling in your own information as opposed to just the internet. Now, one of the other things I want to talk about is collections. So if we go into library here, we have collections. So <clears throat> we can actually go ahead. Let's go ahead and make a uh, look at one that I've already made. So competitive blog research. So very similar in terms of um, I now have the search box that we've got here. So I'm just going to go back to all. So that's kind of the same, but you'll notice it's got a title now and it has a description. So this search has actually been edited to perform a very specific type of task. So if I go into edit collection, um, I've called it competitive blog research. So the point of this tool effectively is to help me take a blog post and analyze it so that if I want to rank for a particular keyword, I want to see what other people are ranking for and the research that I want has to come back to me in a very specific type of format. So um, I'm going to call this collection, competitive blog research. Uh, I'm going to give it a description which says finding research articles present in articles and suggesting more. Uh, that's the one here. This is going to be, uh, say, analyzing blog articles for keyword inspiration. And now I can give it a prompt. So it's instead of just answering the question that you type into the search bar, it's going to answer that question within the context of this prompt that you ask. So let me give you some more um, examples. You are an SEO research assistant who reviews articles that are competing for your targeted keyword. You will analyze the link provided, output the keywords and the post it's ranking for, outline the structure and headings of the post, provide a list of all the key uh, research links and the post references, then provide information gaps the post could be improved on and provide research links to reference 
other sources we could now reference. So basically what I'm trying to do with this tool is find a keyword that I want to rank for, see who else is ranking for it, and then analyze what they're doing well, make sure I include that in my post, and then look for information gaps where I could then improve upon. And I've been very specific in the way that I ask it to output the results. So that's great. I'm going to go ahead and update that. Um, and then we can look at any one of these other ones here. So I'll look at a historic one. So the company I used to work for, Spendesk, um, I've just shared the link in the post. So I would have done basically this. If I go, um, let's go back into here. I'll start it from the beginning so you can see. So it's going to understand the question. I've not actually asked the question. Um, but because it knows the context of my prompt, it should know what to do from here. And let's see if it produces the answer I'm looking for. Okay, so we've started to get the keywords. We've now got the post outline, um, which is great. I now also have, do I have the sources, website links, the post does not reference or links to any other website or sources. See, I think that's incorrect if I open this up in another tab. Yeah, it's definitely incorrect. There are lots of other things referenced here. Information gaps. Okay, so this is good. It's telling me what kind of things are missing in the post, how else I could uh, level up. And then there are some links. Okay, research links and references for new topics. Okay, so it's providing research links of new topics, but it hasn't been smart enough to pull out the links in the page itself. And the reason why I want that is because let's say this was a research piece and they said, okay, 73% of X did Y. I would like to know where they got that research so I could then reference it uh, in my own post. And that also might help with internal link building because I can go to that person and say, hey, I'm now you know, ranking for this post, we're actually more comprehensive than the last one that you were featured in, would you like to link back to us? But that's kind of what collections is, it allows me to do a particular type of search and get research back in a particular format without having to repeat that again and again and again. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Um, it is quite a simple platform. It's very powerful. I think the, the biggest question I have is what is Google going to do to combat this? And what is ChatGPT going to do to combat this? They both have the power to index the web. They both have the power to provide these sorts of results. So I do wonder where the competitive edge between perplexity, Google and OpenAI's ChatGPT is going to be. But for the time being, perplexity AI is a very powerful research uh, tool that you can use um, and to really get over the hallucinations and provide real world citations with real information that you can answer quickly. Um, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if there's anything else you would like me to record in the future. Um, otherwise, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and chat to you soon. Bye-bye.